All right. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Uh, welcome to this amazing PD call. I'm going in. The lecture turned up. Let's begin. So I want to thank you all, first of all, for coming on this call. My name is Mr. Devin Evans. Uh, this is my fifth year, sorry, my sixth year at Butler College Prep, but 5.5 total years of teaching uh, in the network. So I'm very excited about this opportunity for me to present this amazing uh, PD that ought to bless you all and how to turn up the lectures in your classroom spaces. So as of right now, I need you all to get your papers out, your notepad out, crack your fingers a little bit. I'm taking you all back to how you experienced a little bit of college, right? As you all are college graduates, you should have the memory of a lecture and how there's a main form of communication that you will receive in that space. I will also argue that when you are having a conversation, when you are giving a speech, you are also practicing a certain form of lecture, lecturing. And I'm gonna give you all some tools and some tidbits to be able to help you all turn up the lecture in your classroom space. So first thing first, enjoy Mr. Evans' pictures right here. That is me teaching and doing my thing, giving speeches of whatever in Chicago. So I hope you all enjoy this. And one day soon, as you implement these practices, you'll be just like me uh, as well. Let's go ahead and begin. So first of all, every single conversation you have, it ought to have an objective. I'm sure you all know people that ramble a lot or have nothing to say in their conversation. That's because they lack objective. So make sure that when you are in your process of making this lecture for your class, there are objectives. So for this PD session, I hope that we can accomplish all of these on the list right here. I'm going to read them all. And as we in the classroom or in this PD, uh, in my um, reflection document or a survey, I will make sure that I've covered these thoroughly and you feel confident in uh, executing them. The first one says, I want you all to increase and develop your personal power capacity by, uh, by being made aware of innate character traits that you, uh, that you have that can assist in the lecture style instruction. I love this part called your power capacity. You must understand what power you have and use that in your lectures you're going to curate. Number two, learn and apply the proper tone. As I just said tone, you saw I went down a notch in my tone. Okay. So tone means the mood you want to present for yourself in the lecture. When I first began, I had a high tone, high energy. I wanted to have you all in your attention, right? And then in the tone part, I changed the tone a little bit. I went a little low, okay? So learn how to apply proper tone of voice to capture hearts and minds in delicate content delivery. As you all know, some content requires you all to speak in a certain type of tone. If it's a sad type of tone, if you're going to do it real loud, you got to do it sad. If it's a happy or a, a, a melancholy tone, you read in the proper tone. Number three, learn how to teach um, reading skills standards. Sorry, learn how to teach uh, or implement reading skills standards into your verbal lecture. Next one, become aware of your body language uh, and your speech cues for note taking for students learning and listening. So in this conversation already, you see that I have a certain style with my hands. I'm not being like this, but I'm more subtle. When I make a point, I might do something like that. So watch that as I go in my lecture as you learn my body language style. So when you are watching more lectures of me, you have a certain life framework for how to take notes, what's important, and et cetera, by using your body language. The next, uh, deeply recall and use how to give a lecture framework to add in your own instruction. And lastly, we're gonna watch and even impart it with practitioner skills of Pentecostal style pedagogy coined by Dr. Christopher Edmund. I'm gonna show you all an image or a video of me teaching and having this uh, live taking place. You wanna take some notes and discuss it if we have time at the end of this PD session. Let's go. So again, pants out, ready to go. Welcome to this lecture style. I'm gonna try the best I can to give you all a little bit of lecture style as I present the material, and then you're gonna see me live in the actual class later on. I call this session here power capacity. So first of all, in my speaking style, I love using like my, my voice inflection, power capacity, right? So when you're in a classroom space and you're saying a word like that, you know it's important, okay? That word has meaning to me, right? So I make sure my kids feel that when I say the word. This is called the slide here, power capacity, knowing who you are. So first of all, let's read the first line. Lecturing is about bringing your personality and speaking style into content. Knowing and defining your personality will help guide the style of the lecture. You must know who you are. My first two years of teaching, I taught timid. 
I taught very shy. I did not know who I was at 24 years old when I first started teaching. As I began to teach more and more and figured out who I was, my personality came out, okay? So you have to understand at a deep level who you are and bring that into your lectures for your students. So I put down here some um, styles you may have as far as your lecture or your speaking style. Number one says you have high energy with high tone and low tone voice for maximum emotional pull. So when you're in the content trying to keep kids engaged, when you pull at the pathos or the emotion, you can reel them in. Some of you all are soft-spoken with power. Some of you all speak very softly, but you have a very powerful story to tell that rules me in. This reminds me of a teacher in the school, Ms. Rowe, Ms. R-O-E. She does a great job with this. She's a very powerful teacher that's soft-spoken, but she has power in what she has to say. The next one is humorous or corny, practical jokes that lead content and delivery. So shout out to Parento, okay? He is very, very corny, <laughs> okay? But it's his style. So I guarantee that when he gives a lecture or conversation, his corniness comes out and that can reel people into the conversation. The last one says in between or other, so we all are kind of both. So write down, right now, for a couple seconds or like a minute or so, your personality and traits and use it during your lecture. So if you haven't pinned out right now, put down at least two traits right now that you know who you are. I'm funny, I'm corny, I am very energetic. Put it down right now in your notepad, okay? I'm number one, I'm high energy, okay? Every now and then I'll take it low and I'll change the tone a little bit. I'll show a little example in a minute how I do that, but that's who I am as my personality. Bring it out in the conversation, AKA the lecture. Number two bullet point, power is not just tone differentiation. It's about your essence becoming merged with, with, the, with what you are saying. So once again, power, not about the tone, is you taking your whole who you are and put it into the conversation or the lecture, okay? So the answer to the question here, what makes you feel powerful? Or what makes you feel powerful? Okay, think about that. What makes you feel powerful in a conversation? Maybe it's your humor or your laughter. And these are ways you can ask yourself these questions to figure out what is your power capacity. Okay, next slide, moving along. So as you all know, when I do my lecture, I, I'm a little bit fast paced. So uh, I recommend uh, your note-taking style be uh, used because I'm going at a fast pace to get this uh, done in 20 minutes. All right, next one, the tone. I love this as an English teacher and love literature, your tone. Tone is the emotion that you want readers or listeners to feel in a book or in a conversation, okay? So as I said that right there, my tone went down. I'll give you examples of how to go up when you're very, very high energy and down to make the point known. Bullet point number one, what tone does to your content required, okay? So if you're happy or melancholy, reflective, inspirational, or monotone, you may need to research that and figure out which people showcase these emotions at a high level. And how can I begin to implement that same style that other folks use into my own lecture? Number two, you must have an intimate knowledge of content or your ultimate goals as far as an emotional pull um, for this kind of like lecture or kind of tone, okay? If you are reading a book, and the book has a certain tone that may be off, you may be actually um, hurting the content and the emotional pull the book may have for uh, those who read it. So having an intimate understanding of the book and tone and the author is very important when preparing for your lectures. I'm gonna very quickly do a little practice round with this and read something in, in the book. And I'm gonna practice how I use tone in this conversation. So I'm going to, my class is reading a book called Kindred by Tavia Butler. I'm going to read from the chapter called The Fight on page 113, practicing our tone uh, in our lectures. So read aloud. So that's what it's called I'm doing now. <laughs> All right. I took my pants and shoes and got into the tub, still wearing my blouse. I would not let the water soften until I could ease it from my back. In the tub, I sat for a long while without moving, without thinking listening for what I knew I would not hear elsewhere in the house. The pain was a friend. Pain had never been a friend to me before, but now it kept me still. It forced reality on me and kept me sane. That amazing part of the book is talking about a thing we all can relate to called pain, okay? She said in the book right here that pain became a friend. Think right now in your life. 
and York Street where pain was so pervasive, it was so strong that pain became your only confidant, your only friend. See, I did that. If I was in a class right now, I got them hooked, okay? And I'm helping a kid begin to see in this novel that the tone matters. You read the book in the proper tone. And those that have read the book, Kendrick, know that she's going through time right now. She's being abused back in the 1800s and being transported back to the present. So we see here in the book a certain tone that's emerging. And in your lecture style, and you go over a book or you're covering content, you must use tone to reel your readers in, to reel your listeners into your lecture, okay? So um, next PowerPoint slide. Next one is apply the reading skill to a lecture, okay? Now, if you, are, if you are a DOI or if you are a teacher, you're gonna ask yourself, how in the world can I apply a lecture to a, a skill? It's a skill, okay? If you are using Common Core, I love Common Core, by the way, there are some uh, standards here that you can use to bring out and master the skill of listening and also speaking. So look and see right here on the screen, we got things like evaluate a speaker's point of view, their reasoning, and use of evidence and rhetoric, okay? Ethos, logos, and pathos. Assessing the stance, premises, likes among ideas, word choice, points of emphasis, and tone used. That's English skill right there. Come on now. So I want you all to, to understand right now that you can use a lecture and you can center yourself in a conversation and you can still practice a skill. Now, the second part on the slide says that normally this comes from studying. So in a lecture style or a presentation, you're getting very quick information. You're taking notes. But the power actually comes from receiving the lecture when you're, uh, you're getting it live, but also when you go home and study. Okay, so we got kids that don't know how to study and take notes. We already going to fail with the lecture and maximize the how to get the skill taught and mastered. You must know how to study. So from the lecture, you have different bullet points, the intro, conclusion, the main idea, conclusions, right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm going to show you all in the, in the uh, uh, it's a document you're going to look at. I can give to you all. And it's a document that goes over um, how to uh, question your students based upon these skills here the rhetoric here or the evidence here. At what point in my lecture am I using pathos or ethos or logos, right? And if you recall in the conversation, I said, I have taught for 5.5 years. That's my, uh, my uh, ethos coming out. Then I said my tone going up and down, my pathos. I want you to feel it from the, in the novel, right? I just read this book in Kindred using my, my pathos, right? And logos, I don't got that yet, okay? But we're working on later. <laughs> All right, next. Um, this right here I love a lot. Okay, so if you're taking notes, your next part should be body language and cues, okay? And speech cues, body language. So first of all, if you are a fan of Disney, one of my favorite movies of all time called Little Mermaid, okay? And Ursula had a song that said this, and well, she was uh, singing it, but she stopped and she said it and spoken. Don't under underestimate the power of body language, right? Your body language speaks volumes. And sometimes your body language is more powerful than sometimes speaking, okay? Because your body language, like you can sit there mad, have an attitude in the class, right? And that energy can affect the whole space, okay? So when you're giving a lecture or having a conversation, how you stand, right? Things you do with your body all matter when it comes to the conversation. If I'm lecturing like this, I'm irritated. I may be mad at something like that. Some of you all may have a stance where you kind of stand like this. But to folks who are looking at you, they're saying, oh, they, they're kind of closed off. They're not trying to let me into the, how they're feeling with this kind of content. So sometimes my hands are up right here, or it's right here, right? I'm opening up myself to you to engage with me along this journey in my conversation or my lecture, okay? So use your body language, okay? Um, next, your, um, your speech cues or your hand cues, okay? So in my talk right here, I say okay a lot. Okay is normally a stance for me to stop what I'm saying to get my brain ready for the next thought and a transition to a different part of my lecture. So you gotta find your ad -lib. I say okay or come on now, and that's the way to get me, get me hyped up as I'm giving my speech. And for kids to know the next point is maybe, maybe important. Your kids, uh, after a while, should know how you are. They should know your personality trait after you explain it to them or they figure it out. And from there, they can know that my teacher gives a certain a cue or by language cue, cue, I know what that means. All right, question right here really fast for y'all to answer. 
What body language and speech cues do I use to emphasize my points? So take about one minute, please, 30 seconds to talk amongst yourselves and answer that question. What body language and speech cues do I use, Mr. Evans, to emphasize points? All right, I'm gonna move on to the next part. Thanks for your conversations you uh, said. And I guess at the end of this, we're gonna go over what you said um, as far as my body language and my cues and speech cues. All right, uh, next one, how to go in a lecture framework. So here are some very simple steps you can use to ensure that when you are planning your lectures and your classes or introductions or hooks, you are using this framework. Number one, it's called power capacity, right? What are some innate character traits that um, you uh, know you have that can help other people be entrenched uh, in your uh, lecture or conversation. Your tone, right? Your body language, uh, speaking cues, uh, applying the skill, and also reflection. That for the students. Next, I'm gonna show you all a video of this in action. As I'm uh, showing the video, I want you all to take some notes down on things I may be doing that makes this, I'm going in a lecture turn up uh, worthy okay i'm gonna play this it's from 2019 it was in towards the end of the school year towards june um, my class at the time period was literature but in the last week of school i decided to experiment a little bit and talk about a little bit of literature and history together um hence my course i'm teaching now all right let's go ahead and show this little video and let's see how mr evans gets down in the classroom hope you can see that I'm gonna actually pause, sit, I'm gonna stop my share and reshare just so we can make sure that you can see it. All right, I believe it should be seen now. Let's go ahead and go. Let's begin. I want someone to read out loud with passion um, this preamble. Let's begin, somebody. Go ahead and read. Pause well, right there. You don't have to read in my classroom, right? As intellectuals, as historians, right, you must take your time and break this down step by step to bring, in, uh, bring it home for you all. The word we. So last year, September, I covered a very powerful lesson on beginning stuff about point of view. I covered that last year. Y'all forgot about it, right? Yeah. What is we? First, second, third person. What? Third person. No, it's not. It is first person. It's a plural. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm her third. My bad. It's a first person plural pronoun. We is first person. But we have what kind of effect, though? Everyone. What part of you, though? First person. Second person effect. You made sure the story, right? He said, we the people. Including who? Who was we? Everybody. Let's pause right there. This powerful stuff in this, your nation, right? You're part of Go oh, way back to 1776. Uh, what is it called? Declaration of Independence, whatever. Declaration of something. Independence, right? Yeah. And that said, in that document, there it said, all men, all what? Men. All men. You're going from all men, now you're going to we. What the happened? What happened in ideology where you're going from men to now we're talking about we? Your yeah. nation, right? You're part of this nation. I am teaching good today. Ever since teaching y'all, know my stuff. We the people. It is a first person pronoun, a second person effect. I like that. All righty. Um, hope you enjoyed that short little video of Mr. Evans going in in my lecture in 2019. Almost done, you all. So this is the last part of the uh, PowerPoint slide. I want to first of all thank you all for your time today. Uh, in the chat box, I'm going to uh, put in the chat box today and also in the um, uh, place where they have all this uh, documentation. I would love you all to do a feedback survey for me. Um, this is my first time doing an official, like a PD in this kind of wing style. I want to always make sure I improve as I continue to help other teachers to get um, at, a, do, at a different level of teaching using lectures. Lastly, I recommend a, a book you all to read. It is called For White Folks Who Teach in the Hood and the Rest of Y'all Too by Dr. Christopher Edmund. He is a powerful, powerful um, 
a researcher, educator, and professor. And his book was very transformational for me as far as my classroom practices. And I recommend that you read the book if you want to also figure out um, other things you can do to enhance your classroom space. All right, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all soon.